Hello everyone and welcome to Taste Test, the show where we try limited edition chocolate products and ask two very important questions. Number one, is it an improvement on the original? And number two, where does it fall on our patented taste test ranking chart, known to his friends as the Tasteometer. In honour of our current champion, Aero Chocolate Caramel, today's episode is in fact a caramel special, where three tantalising products will be facing their own personal judgement day. Starting with Digestive's Twists, Chocolate Chip and Caramel Bits, moving on to Kit Kat's Gold, and last but not least, well, maybe least, it's Twix Salted Caramel. For these three unfortunate treats, playtime is officially over and only the test remains. Let's get started. Kicking off today's festivities, we have Digestive's Twists, Chocolate Chip and Caramel Bits. Now, for the purpose of the taste test, these are being considered a special edition of plain digestives. And that's relevant because I fucking hate them. As someone who doesn't drink tea, plain digestives really serve no purpose to me whatsoever. And in comparison to other dessert options, they are about as appealing as a plain slice of bread. So with that in mind, these biscuits have a very low hurdle to clear in terms of being an improvement on their predecessor. Before we crack these little troublemakers open, let's do the customary look at the packaging, because it was only last week that I was saying that McVitie's doesn't really stray too far from their in-house style, and yet here we have a nice little change of pace. You might call it a twist on their usual design, but I politely ask that you don't. What's really interesting here as well is that these biscuits are a mere 45 calories each. That's nice for the waistline, but it does make me wonder if some taste has been sacrificed. Well, let's not waste any more time in getting these much needed answers. I'm opening them. The most important part of any biscuit opening is of course the bouquet. There's a strong smell of caramel, I have a feeling it could be overpowering the chocolate. But let's find out. Oh no. Okay, so an issue straight out of the box is that the biscuit on the top of the pile has more or less disintegrated. So uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of biscuit surgery. Turns out I was incapable of doing it in a mess-free way, but let's try the fucking biscuit. I think I need to go for another. Well, to paraphrase Superhands, those digestives are really Moorish. I was physically incapable of stopping myself from getting a second one, and you saw that. The biscuit itself is light as a feather, it dissolves away to a pleasant sugary nothingness in your mouth, and that may not sound very appealing, but trust me, it is. And the chocolate is a little bit gooey and soft, that, that might not be intentional, that might just be because I've had these biscuits at above room temperature. In terms of whether the caramel is overpowering, that's actually very interesting, because the first biscuit I ate, I felt it came through very strong, and the second one, I actually think the chocolate was the prominent taste. So, there's a power struggle going on here, and it might just come down to what you're looking for. So, are digestive twists better than normal digestives? Well, yes, of course they are. Don't ask me silly questions. The more important thing is, where are they going to go on the taste-ometer? Well, the answer may surprise you, and I'm going to tell you at the end of the show. Next up today is Kit Kat Gold, and let me just say I bet pretty heavily on this one. I remortgaged my house, and I was able to buy two bars, because I'm pretty confident I'm going to like it, but let's see if I'm horribly wrong. So what we've got here is a caramel flavour white chocolate Kit Kat with some milk chocolate at the bottom too, so there's a lot of elements at play here. I have a feeling it's going to be a little bit like a gold bar, you know, the McVitie's gold bar. Everybody knows them, and they are very good to be fair. So, let's crack this bad boy open and see what he has to say for himself. In terms of the packaging, for some reason every time I look at this I think it's coffee. So, I don't know, maybe I've got some subliminal issues. Interestingly, it does actually smell a bit like coffee, but I've checked the ingredients and there is no coffee in this bar. Let me check them again. Yeah, there ain't no coffee here. It's just my mind playing tricks on me. Let's eat this thing. This one's taken me by surprise a little bit. It doesn't really taste like a McVitie's Gold Bar. That's fine, I'm not gonna hold it against it. But it doesn't really taste 
very closely to any of the caramel products we've talked about on this show before. And for that reason, my frame of reference is all over the place. I'm questioning everything. Everything. It tastes alright, but I feel a little bit underwhelmed by this one, to be honest with you. And if you're asking me, is it better than an ordinary Kit Kat, bearing in mind that Kit Kats are small but mighty, you know, they're pretty fucking good. So the answer's a firm no. Well, here we are at the final test, or as I like to call it, El Examen Ultimo. And I have to say, I am losing the world to lead. <laughs> I think it would be fair to say that we haven't had any breakout stars today, as we did last time. Aero Chocolate Caramel, what a bay. But, maybe that will change now. I'm not very optimistic, but maybe it will. We've got Twix Salted Caramel stepping up to the plate, and the reason why I'm skeptical about this one is that it very much reminds me of that Alan Partridge quote, they've rebadged it, you fool. Because honestly, Twix salted caramel sounds almost exactly the same as a regular Twix, with maybe just a marginal amount more salt. I do think that there is a possibility that the good people at Mars Wrigley Confectionery UK Limited have sort of jumped on a bandwagon here, because as we all know, salted caramel is very stylish at the moment, it's popping up everywhere. But is it really necessary in this instance? Well, we're going to talk about it. First of all, I'll just say I do kind of like the design of this chocolate bar. It's a nice shade of blue. Blue's one of my favourite colours. And also, um, well, that's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> one salt is all it takes. Let's see what it tastes like. Oh my god. What the fuck have they done? Okay, so here's something interesting about the Twix Salted Caramel. I do believe that it is different to the regular Twix, but not in the way anyone would have hoped. It tastes virtually exactly the same. The difference is in the texture. Yeah, I believe there is salt in that caramel, because every now and then, you just get kind of crunchy, grainy salt. And, oh my god, the aftertaste is where the salt really comes to the forefront. I feel like I've just had one Twix finger, and my mouth is now just filling up with salt. What a terrible idea and a terrible execution. <laughs> I don't like this. I don't like what they've done here. It feels it's wrong, wrong. wrong. <laughs> well, hello everyone, and welcome to a very sombre tasteometer ranking. I've changed into all black because I'm mourning the loss of any hope I had for this episode being good. Let's go back to taste number one, where things started off cautiously optimistic. Digestive twists, chocolate chip and caramel bits had a low hurdle to clear, admittedly, but damn it, at least they did it. And now I find myself in something of a quandary over whether they deserve to be above or just below the chocolate brownie hobnobs. I think that, to be honest with you, I would prefer a pack of chocolate brownie hobnobs over a pack of digestive twists on one of my wild Saturday nights. But, I do like an underdog story, and I admire that Digestive Twists tried something a little bit different, whereas the chocolate brownie hobnobs felt like they were very much resting on their laurels. So for that reason, Digestive Twists, chocolate chip and caramel bits will be sandwiched between Toblerone Orange Twists and chocolate brownie hobnobs here on the board. Look, it was a solid effort. It didn't blow me away but it was all right. Now, from that point, the episode really did take a dark turn. Kit Kat Gold, I had very high expectations for it. I invested in two bars, and I don't think you understand just how serious that is. It was not unpleasant, but nor was it particularly memorable, and for that reason, it's going for a low ranking, somewhere down here, I'll say. <laughs> But little did I know that the worst was yet to come, and how bad it was. I'm talking, of course, about Twix Salted Caramel, an abomination wandering the face of the earth that we should all be incredibly worried about. Twix Salted Caramel was just very poorly executed. I have no issue against Salted Caramel. Let the record show that. I like it, but in this case, it tasted like trash. Never have I had a salted caramel product before, where not only could I feel the graininess of the salt in the caramel itself, but also I had a strange salty aftertaste on my tongue for about five minutes afterwards. What an abysmal failure in every sense of the word. Twix Salted Caramel is our new rock bottom.
Well everyone, I think we could all do with a little lie down in a dark room, so I'm going to wrap things up here. Thank you very much for watching Taste Test Episode 2. It's been a dark day here on the channel, but that is the beauty of this show. It is so unpredictable, and you never know what you're going to get. I mean, you know that I'm going to be talking shit about chocolate, but beyond that, it really is anybody's guess. <laughs>